please welcome the directors of Negative Space, Max Porter and Ru Kuahata. Max, Rue, I noticed that you've learned some French. I wish you didn't <laughs> mention, but yes. <laughs> so you are American filmmakers, but your film is a French production. Yes. Yep. Could you tell us the, the story behind this? Why it's French the, the production? The fact it's, it's a, f a French production, yeah. Sure. Um, so I'm born and raised in Japan. So I think, you know, France and Japan has like a mutual love for each other. So I had like a fascination for French culture since I was very little. And, you know, with especially the cinema culture and um, how short form and animation is very appreciated in France, we always wanted to come here and, and live and work. But I think the, the problem was, okay, how? It, it seemed like a big hurdle, but... Um, our friend and mentor and colleague and boss, Laurence Arcadius, who made a uh, tombe dans une chambre à coucher. Mm -hmm. um, she was like, oh, no, no, it's not that difficult. You can do it. So she sort of guided us through like the process of funding, finding producers, and um, it just happened. Great. There's something very intimate, uh, very personal in your film. I first thought it was based on your personal story, and then I noticed it was based on a poem by Ron Cordge. Tell me about how you discovered this text, how you've decided to adapt it. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so the text is very short. Uh, it's 150 words. Oh. And um, we discovered the poem, and um, I felt that it was a story that both of us can connect to um, on a personal level. And f as collaborators, that's the most important thing for both of us to find our in, our entry point into a project so that we are equally passionate along the way. So um, when I read the poem, I started to think about my relationship with my father and um, Rue, you want to talk about? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, my father was a pilot for Japan Airlines. Oh. So my memory of him is packing his suitcase with this really intense list of what to pack, how to pack. So when I read the poem, I'm like, oh no, this is my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we tried to incorporate <clears throat> personal details. So the, the couch in the film is based on my childhood couch. And Rue's um, family made the tiny paintings. Um, they're, they're not trained art. Well, your brother's a trained artist, but the rest of your family, they're, they're not trained artists. And they made the little paintings for the background. So we felt that even though it was someone else's text, if we incorporated our own specific um, uh, connections, uh, it would feel personal. You, you worked together since long time? I don't, I don't remember exactly how many films you did together, how many projects you did no, together. Four films. Four? We've been working for 10 years together. Okay. And do you have your own specialty? One is an animator, the other one is on a camera, or how does it work, basically? So um, this project was a bit different because we worked with a team. Um, okay. And actually, our, our lead animator, Sylvain, is uh, in the audience. Um, <laughs> so, um, but uh, typically, um, we'll write together, we storyboard together, um, we make concept art together. Uh, Rue does the, um, like the character designs, she does the set fabrication and all the plans. Um, when we move into the animation phase, um, I'm responsible for more of the light and camera. Um, uh, and in this case, I worked closely with the uh, director of photography. Uh, Rue, uh, for this project, worked closely with the animators. Um, I was responsible for the, the final edit and um, the compositing and all the post-production. Um, I do a lot of the initial sound design uh, before passing it along to, uh, uh, to be finalized or, or worked on by our composer and sound designer. So, but it's, a, it's very much a back and forth process. 
the voice, the voice is very important. It's crucial in the film. Albert Burney plays the narrator. He, he voiced the narrator. Tell us about the way you work with actors and the way you, you find them. Um, Albert is a film director and he's a good friend of ours from uh, where we live. And um, he was, we were just talking and I just thought, you have such a nice voice, you wanna just do voice for us? And that's how simple it was. Um, from our experiences, it, I feel like film directors are the best voiceover actor. Oh yeah. <laughs> Somehow without much direction, they just, just by talking about the film and discussing, they seem to understand much more and um, easy to improvise, like, oh, we should try this, we should try this. And even with Albert, we said, no, it's, it's enough. And he's like, no, one more time, one more time, <laughs> one more time. And it just kept going. But he was very, very easy to work with. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, I, I think also because he's a director, he had a, a sense of flow. Like, he knew when he, it should be slower and when it should pick up a bit. Um, so he had a real feel for how his voice would play into the overall narrative. Questions from the audience, the question venant de la salle. Oui, Madame Prédubar. Just a second. Hello, F. Noni from Positive. Would you remind us of the name of the poet that was the inspiration again, please? Uh, Ron Corchi. How do you spell that? K-O-E-T. Oh, sorry. Oh. Oh. K O E K O E R T G E. -E. -E. Yeah. <laughs> Merci. Oui, je voudrais revenir sur la fin du film euh, avec le cercueil. Est-ce que c'est quelque chose que, qui a été inspiré par quelque chose que vous avez vécu? So the, the end of the film with the coffin. It was in a poem or based on somebody, something you, uh, you already uh, experienced? No, it's, it's in the poem, no? No. No, no, the coffin. Uh, so he, he refers to um, looking at his father in a big garden, um, but the, uh, the overall structure where it starts in the present tense and it goes back into a memory and then comes back to the present, um, that was all uh, invented after the poem. That, that was uh, our structure. Another question, Martin. Uh, in an animation festival, you're going to have so many people who are obsessed with details that you had a million people in the theater just saying, oh, "That's me," you know. So, and um, I was one of them. <laughs> Um, I was wondering if um, you were, it was interesting the way, the way you handled the, um, the dismissal of, of the mother's um, packing um, capabilities, you know, as if like this became a kind of ritual between the um, son and the father, but also the way in which um, they established a rather poignant bond between them to, to kind of resolve the distance between them physically. So, sure. so, not a um, so uh, yeah, we, we thought about that, that moment a lot when the mother is mentioned in the poem. A, and in the line it says, um, mom tried but didn't have the knack. Yeah. And we felt that it can be interpreted several different ways. Um, and for us, we felt that maybe it was referencing a tension between the mother and the father. Um, and we have her come down the stairs and we, we crop her um, uh, right below the eyes so that um, it, it still keeps a focus on the father and the son and a ritual and something that they share. Um, but we wanted to, to hint at a, a bigger relationship between the mother and the father in that moment. Max Rue, thank you very much. It was a great pleasure to have you. Thank you.